Hello everyone and welcome to the moment that I've been waiting for my entire life. Godzilla vs. King Kong. This will be the greatest sporting event of all time. Our matchup is as epic as the Super Bowl, it's as big as the World Cup, and it's like the ancient Olympics because the competitors are completely naked. Oh my god. Oh my god. Here's how it works. Round number one, box office. Round number two, tomato meter. Round three, powers. And then we'll do a wild card round to help settle the dust. I'll throw my two cents in along the way. It's probably gonna be like four cents for this vid, but ultimately you will decide the fate of these two legendary beasts. <laughs> Round number one, box office. We find ourselves on the precipice of Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which is gonna set up Godzilla vs. Kong in 2020. And those films have a long way to go to be the most dominant in the celebrated history of these legends. Now, Godzilla jumps out to an early lead simply based on number of films. He's got 36 total to Kong's nine. However, both fellas only have four films each with reliable box office numbers. And Kong actually gets the crown of best total domestic box office, $709 million to Godzilla's $507 million, and best average box office also goes to Kong, $177 million to the Lizards, $127 million. So the Great Ape should win this round easily, right? Uh, uh, not so fast. Kong is fighting out of Skull Island, but he does his best box office damage in North America. Godzilla also does well here, but he's fighting out of Japan, and he crushes that box office as well. So to render a verdict, this will come down to the highest gross for one individual film. And Godzilla made $262 million with 1998's Godzilla. Really, we have to talk about that? Oh, God, it was so bad. Whoa! <laughs> the, this is where the Knicks, like, get showered and everything. God. The 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong is at $304 million. So Skull Island's favorite son wins round number one. <laughs> Round two, tomato meter. Kong is up one, but I fear we have awoken a sleeping giant. We call him Godzilla. Godzilla not only loves destruction and fire, he's also a fan of getting good reviews. Of the 30 movies we have scores for him on the tomato meter, his average is an almost fresh 58%. His average stands above Kong's seven film average that is 55.5%. So Kong does have the highest ranked film of either competitor on the tomato meter with the 1933 classic that started it all, King Kong at 98%. Shout out Fay Ray. <laughs> However, Kong also has the lowest rated movie on the tomato meter, King Kong Lives. Any guesses to its score? To quote Animal House, Mr. Blutarski. Zero point zero really that's a shame because i saw that movie in the theater when i was like five and i loved it it's great let's start a hashtag hashtag kong for life we'll work on it later all right i'm calling this round godzilla gets the win he's on the board and we got us a tied ball game heading into round three he looks angry round three powers what I love about both these gentlemen is that they don't just rely on their massive size to wreak havoc and cause mass destruction, they have actual abilities too. Godzilla is known as the Thunder Wizard for a reason. His headlining special power is atomic breath and it is nasty. He can summon fire from his belly and doesn't have to eat a sriracha burger to do so. Godzilla also excels at regeneration, mutation, radiation absorption, and even monster telepathy from Godzilla 1994. Plus, he's an excellent swimmer. He's got a very fluid breaststroke. I really want to see what his backstroke looks like. That's my stuff. If you don't know how King Kong can compete with a fire-breathing, radiation-soaking dinosaur, then you're underestimating Kong's raw athletic ability. He has super strength, tremendous speed, is a great climber, and he boasts a perfect form on the single-leg takedown. And when he's done battle with Godzilla in the past, he's shown some nice immunities. In 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla, his fur was impervious to flame, and he was able to draw strength from electricity. Electricity makes him stronger. Now watch. Talk about neutralizing Godzilla. Now, the 1998 Godzilla had the famous tagline, Size Does Matter. That actually might be the only thing good about that film. Godzilla's height can range from 355 feet, as in the 2014 iteration, all the way to 984 feet in the 2017 anime, Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. Meanwhile, Will Kong 
He was just 147 feet in Godzilla vs. King Kong, and he shrunk to a mere 100 feet in Kong Skull Island. He is not tall enough to ride this ride, or is he? When these two beasts did tangle before, Kong appeared to win at least in the version that ran here in the United States. They both went in the water at the end, but only Kong surfaced. Hmm. And look, forgive me if I sound like a baseball purist here, but Kong does all this naturally, okay? Godzilla is the very definition of artificial enhancement. He was made by nuclear stuff. So it may look cool, but it's also cheating. It's like when Captain America cheated, when he got all those super soldier abilities. Oh, that's a hot take. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. Look, Kong did it the way Mother Nature intended, and that's why he gets the upset win in this round. Now it's time for a wild card round, competition. Godzilla needs this one to tie, so we'll take a close look at it. Who have you played in the past? Which one of our boys has been going against top level heavyweights and who's been pummeling a bunch of tomato cans? Kong mostly plays home games on Skull Island and there he's done battle with skull crawlers. They killed his entire family. Okay. Squids, even robot King Kong. Now he got lucky to escape that one with his life, but the marquee matchup on Skull Island has been Kong versus T-Rex. I don't know what the T-Rex's name is. There's been a bunch of them. Any T-Rex counts. He's fought a bevy of them over the decades, but he always emerges wounded and victorious. And then I guess he eats them. That's what I imagine he does. I bet they taste like turkey. <laughs> Godzilla ain't fighting any turkeys. Listen to this who's who of opponents. Hidora, Mutos, Biolante. Ring any bells? Okay, how about Gigan, Destroya, Mechagodzilla, King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra, the script for 1998's Godzilla? Yeah, yeah. Godzilla's done battle across continents regularly, and his fighting has often been done to defend us, planet Earth, from a bunch of really scary creatures. Kong, more often than not, he's just fighting on behalf of a young human lady he's sweet on, and I don't really know how that first date works. Godzilla wins this round easily. He's fought tons of headliners and Charles Barkley. Remember that ad campaign? Godzilla's wearing Rex specs in the early 90s? Do your homework, kids. The Lakers are looking for a big man. Okay, so it's a tie. Kong and Godzilla each got two rounds from me, but I have to declare a winner, and I think I'm going with my heart. Now look, Godzilla, you're an absolute gem. My life would not be the same without you. But I think Kong is king in the end. His smarts and his quickness is gonna get the best of you. He got two rounds today, and he helped kick everything that we love off way back in 1933. King Kong, you're the winner, just in my book. <laughs> this is just my opinion. Now it's your vote. You are gonna determine the true winner here. All you have to do, head to the comment section right now and let us know who wins in your mind, and we'll tally it up. What a day this was. You know, some folks dream of making a ton of money, starting a family. Me, I just wanted to announce a Kong vs. Godzilla match, and today a young boy's dream came true. Thanks for watching, everyone.